This is fun. I love sailing. Yeah, the fresh air and the sea. Hey, Velocity, what would you do if you are way out at sea, away from any land, and you dropped your GPS overboard? Or your navigation unit started telling you to take the next off-ramp at a half a mile? I'd be lost. <laughs> exactly. How would you find your way back? Well... Knowing the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, I can figure out which way to go to find land. That's right. GPS was only invented since the space age began, and we could get satellites into orbit. For centuries before that, mariners had to navigate using astronomy. Let's Explore Astronomy is sponsored in part by... Hey, give a shout out to our sponsors, without whom we would not be here. Visit their websites and partake of their services and products. A big thank you to the Yukon Department of Tourism and Culture and Westmark Hotels, Westmark Whitehorse. Up until the end of the 20th century, there was no such thing as GPS. If you were on a long sea voyage away from the sight of land, you had to find your way by observing the stars and sun. Even early aviators had to find their location by navigating by the stars. In the very early days of sea exploration, ships would travel down the coast, keeping the shore in sight. Then they could easily turn around and sail back following the coast again, to the place they started. But soon the captains of the boats wanted more accuracy and to make detailed maps to show exactly where they were. Plus, they wanted to sail out to sea away from land. So they turned to astronomers. Let's pretend that it's the 1700s. I will be a navigation instructor and you be the student learning how to navigate so you can get a job on a ship. So, you want to learn to be a navigator, eh? Yes, sir. I want to get a job on a great sailing ship. I want to sail the seas and explore the world, find new riches and new places. City life is not for me. I was born to explore and yearn for the freedom of the open sea. And I don't want to be just a simple deckhand. I want to learn to navigate. Good navigators are high demand and the pay is good. Well, the first thing you need to learn about is astronomy. Astronomy? What do I care about the stars? I want to explore the sea, sir. Without a knowledge of the stars and astronomy, your voyage will be short as you will soon get lost or run aground and sink. The stars will tell you where you are. So, how does that work? Well, let's start with the basics, the stars. The first thing you need to do is find the North Star. The easiest way to find the North Star is by finding the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is about the easiest thing to find in the night sky and will point directly to the North Star. The Big Dipper appears to rotate around the North Star, but the two stars in the bowl of the Dipper will always point to the North Star. So by finding the North Star, I will know which way is north. Then I will also know which way is south, east, and west. Got it, sir! This is step one. Now, you know which way you are sailing, but you still need to know where you are. Until you know where you are, and where home port is, you're still lost. But never fear, you just need the altitude of the North Star. Altitude? Yes, altitude. How high in the sky is the North Star? The altitude of the North Star is your north-south position, or latitude. But for this, you need to know some geometry. Geometry? Oh boy, this is starting to get complicated, sir. Oh no, it's easy. The Earth is divided into degrees. The equator is degree zero, and the North Pole is degree 90. If we measure the altitude of the North Star, we will get a number in degrees. That number will also be the number of degrees north of the equator you are. Both the early Arab and early Chinese navigators were the first to measure altitude. The Arabs used a kamal. This is a stick with a string. The Chinese did the opposite in that they used a standard string length and had different stick lengths. But the concept is the same. 
Today, we have much more sophisticated instruments. So how do we do it today, sir? Today, we have things like an astrolabe, quadrant, cross staff, and sextant. You mean I gotta learn all those things, sir? Well, if you want to be a good navigator, they're all similar, but different at the same time. You'll most likely choose the one you like the best. The thing they all do is measure altitude. A quadrant is simply a quarter circle with a string and weight tied to it. Aim the sights on the quadrant at the North Star and note where the string crosses the scale. Read the number on the scale and you have the latitude of where you are. But this thing has a problem at sea. The rocking of the boat means the string won't stay still. So the astrolabe was developed. The Portuguese took the complicated Arab astrolabe and simplified it just for use by mariners. People like Columbus and Magellan used the astrolabe. The cross staff is a lot like the Kamal except instead of a string, it has a straight shaft with a scale on it. Try the quadrant. What did you get? Between 38 and 39 degrees, sir. Correct. We are in port in Lisbon. Lisbon is between 38 and 39 degrees. Whenever you get a reading of this, you are directly east or west of Lisbon. But between 38 and 39 degrees is not very accurate. So we divide the degrees up into 60 segments called minutes. Minutes? Yes, but not minutes of time. Although just like time it is in 60 segments. We also divide each minute up into 60 segments also. Let me guess, sir. Seconds. Exactly. You're good at this. But the old instruments were not accurate enough to that degree. In order to gain this precision, today we use a sextant. A sextant uses glass and mirrors. Looking through the scope, you aim at the horizon. Move the arm until you see the North Star superimposed on the horizon in the scope. Fine-tune it with the dial on the side. Got it, sir. Read the degrees on the scale. Between 38 and 39 degrees, sir. Now, read the numbers off the dial before the zero. That is your minutes. 42? So we are at 38 degrees and 42 minutes, sir? Exact! Bravo! Lisbon is at 38 degrees, 42 minutes north of the equator. Map makers have created maps and tables that are very accurate today. And by taking a reading on the sextant, we can look up on the map exactly where we are in latitude. That is all well and good, sir. If it is nighttime, what if you want to know where you are during the day? Do you drop anchor and wait till night, sir? Then you sight the sun. Some instruments you can use the sun's reflection. And you can put on special coated filters on the sextant to protect your eyes. Read the sun's altitude at exactly noon, when the sun is at its highest in the sky. Then consult your book for the day of the year, and it will tell you your latitude. Remember that the sun is at a different altitude depending on the day of the year, so one must account for this. Oh boy, this is getting confusing, sir. Ah, uh, it will come with practice. Look at the maps if you don't understand. The southern hemisphere is also divided into 90 degrees, just like in the north. To denote the difference, we say, for example, 38 degrees north if we are in the northern hemisphere, and 38 degrees south if we are in the southern hemisphere. We write it as plus 38 degrees in the north and minus 38 degrees in the south. But I am now thinking that this tells me nothing of where I am east-west, sir. You are right. Now we learn how to tell longitude. The world is divided east-west into 360 degrees. Using solar and lunar eclipses, the ancient Greeks determined that every 15 degrees of longitude equals one hour in time. So say it's 3 o'clock at 0 degrees. Then at 15 degrees east of there, it is 4 o'clock. And 15 degrees west of there, it is 2 o'clock. Now we must consult the astronomy charts. We have to find a star that will be near the moon at a certain time. Using the sextant, we measure the distance. When the star and the moon are in the correct position, we know the time. 
Let's pretend we are out at sea and taking a reading that says it's 9 o'clock. Our chronometer on board, set at the port in Lisbon, says it's 11 o'clock. Where are we? Well, we are two hours different from Lisbon. You said it was one hour for every 15 degrees. So two hours different from Lisbon means that we are 30 degrees away. Since 9 o'clock where we are is earlier than 11 o'clock in Lisbon, we must be west of Lisbon. So we are 30 degrees west of Lisbon. Exactly. It is actually easier with the sun at high noon. When the sun reaches its highest point in the sky, it is noon. Using your chronometer, you know the time back home. So you can now figure out how many degrees west or east of home you are. Plot that on a map with your latitude, and you know exactly where in the world you are. Piece of cake, sir. I'm ready. Let's go out to sea. First, you need to buy the nautical almanac. It has all the tables of lunar distances and sun positions. Meet me back here at 8 o'clock Wednesday morning, and we will head out to sea to practice. You are on your way to becoming a navigator. I will be here, sir. Thank you. And up until GPS came in only recently, all navigation was done this way. Thanks to astronomy, we were able to navigate the seas and explore the world. In 1884, Greenwich, England was designated Degrees Zero, and every place is measured in degrees east and west of it. In our example, Lisbon is at 9 degrees 8 minutes west. Also, Greenwich Mean Time is the official reference point for world time. I've got an idea, Herc. Throw yourself overboard. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just stay inside of our dock. Then I could just sit back and relax and enjoy the boat ride. I've had enough math for the day. It's hurting my brain. Little starboard, Herc. A little more. A little more. Perfect. I need to get more sun for my tan.